Okay, now we're going to deal with moles and molar masses. So in order to perform controlled experiments in the lab, we need to know the amount of each substance we're using. Counting the number of molecules or atoms is just not possible. We can, however, determine the mass using a balance. Therefore, there must be a relationship between the amount in moles and the mass of a substance. So an atom is a very small entity. Its mass is measured in atomic mass units, AMUs, or short form U, in case AMU isn't short enough. One atom of carbon-12 has a mass of 12.00 U, or 12.00 atomic mass units. One mole of carbon-12, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, third atoms, so we're talking six sextillion carbon-12 atoms, not one, has a mass of 12 grams. One mole of an element has a mass in grams with the same numerical value as the mass of one atoms in atomic mass units. However, these represent very different quantities of carbon. So we're talking about one atom of carbon versus six sextillion atoms. So the mass of one mole of a substance is called the molar mass, and it has a symbol, big M, capital M, and the units are grams per mole. The molar mass of a compound is the sum of the molar masses of each of the elements in the compound. You can find these masses on the periodic table, and they are usually underneath the atomic symbol. So, calculate the molar masses of these entities. So, water, H2O, you take the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01, grams per mole and you multiply it by 2 because there's two atoms of hydrogen and we're also going to add to that the molar mass of oxygen so that's 16 you add these together 18.02 grams per mole so the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams for every mole of water molecules. Carbon dioxide. Carbon is 12. Oxygen is 16 times 2 is 32. So the molar mass is 44.01. So there's 44.01 grams in every mole of carbon dioxide molecules. So for every 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, it will have a mass of 44.01 grams. Sodium chloride, nothing different. Mass of sodium, mass of chlorine, add them together. fifty-eight point four four grams per mole. So we can calculate molar masses from a periodic table. So if later in a question you're not given the molar mass but you're given the substance, you know you can find it from your periodic table. So the amount of a substance, so the moles, the mass and the molar mass are related to each other through the equation moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So in your magic triangle if you need this. If you cover up the 
letter that you're looking for. So if I'm looking for the number of moles, my formula will be what's left in the same position. So mass divided by molar mass. If I want to find mass, cover up mass, my formula is moles times molar mass. And if you want to find molar mass, maybe you're trying to identify what an element is based on some information, then it is mass divided by the number of moles. Okay, first example. A typical can of cola contains 40 grams of sucrose. Calculate the amount of sucrose in 40 grams. So here, always do this, always identify what you've got. So mass, here's molar mass. Right? You've got the chemical formula for a substance, so you can find the molar mass, and it wants to calculate the amount. So we're looking for moles. So moles is mass divided by molar mass, and now we've just got to figure out the molar mass. You should always show your calculation if you want full marks on questions. It's proper form. Okay, so the molar mass is 342.34 grams per mole. Here, uh, your calculator's dumb, doesn't know sig figs, so your calculator gives you 176. Put in the point zero zero. You should always follow your sig fig rules. So now we have the molar mass. We can solve for moles. So 40.0 grams divided by 342.34 grams per mole. So that is 0 0.11684 moles. And we're going to round to three significant digits. There's three sig figs in 40 grams, five fig, sig figs in our molar mass. So go by the lowest number of sig figs, so 0 0.117 moles of sucrose in 40 grams of sucrose. Okay, another example. A liter of blood contains 4.0 millimoles. So that's like milliliter to liter, millimole to mole. So this is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. To go from millimoles to moles, 4.0 millimoles, there's a thousand millimoles in one mole. Just like there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. So your units are going to cancel. 4 divided by a thousand is 0 0.004 or 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3. And we've got sucrose, sorry, glucose. We've got glucose. So we need to find out the molar mass of glucose because we want to find the mass. So our formula would be moles times molar mass. Glucose, so 6 times 12.01, 12 times 1.01, and 6 times 16. Okay, so it's 180.18 grams per mole. So we're going to take our moles. That's two sig figs. Please put in your units so you can show that they cancel. So moles cancel. One's on the top, one's on the bottom. And... 
answer is 0 0.72072 grams. So we've got two sig figs and five sig figs, so our answer has to be two. So there's 0.72 grams of glucose in a liter of blood. One last example. Sometimes you'll have to find the mass of a number of atoms of an element or a number of molecules of a compound in grams and atomic mass units. So for atomic mass units, this is your N. This is your element, so we can get the mass off the periodic table. So for AMUs, we use the number of atoms, and you're going to multiply it by the mass in the periodic table. So that is 118.73. But because we're talking about atoms, they are A, M, U. So that's atomic mass units per atom. So you take the mass from the periodic table, stick the unit AMU on, or U, and it's the U per atom, the mass per atom. Your atoms are going to cancel, so you're left with atomic mass units. So 2,967.75 AMUs. Now, uh, significant digits. You can't have part of an atom, so you can't measure an atom in terms of quantity. So the number 25 is actually a count not a measurement. So it has an infinite number of sig figs. So you cannot use the 25 to determine your number of significant digits in your final answer. So you're going to have to go with your mass. So five. You can have five digits in your final answer. So 2,967.8 atomic mass units or U's. So that's the mass in atomic mass units. Now we've got to do in grams. Well, we know the number of atoms is 25. We know the molar mass is 118.71 grams per mole. So we need to find the number of moles. It's an atom. It's tin. So Avogadro's number. is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole, and that is Avogadro's number. So we can use all of these. So we can use uh, this equation first to solve for moles. And then plug that into the second equation to find a mass. So moles is the number of atoms divided by Avogadro's number. So this is 25 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now be careful when you do your math in your calculator. Don't do 25 divided by 6.02 multiplied by times 10 to the 23rd because you will get a completely wrong answer. When you plug in Avogadro's number, it is 6.02 EXP to the 23rd or EE to the 23rd, whichever one it is. Put it in brackets if you're uncertain. So this will be 4.1 Two eight times ten to the negative twenty three moles. Now that we have the number of moles, we can solve for mass. So four point one two eight 
So 4.1528 times 10 to the negative 23 moles times 118.71 grams per mole. Moles cancel. And the answer is 4.929 times 10 to the negative 21 grams. Now, does that make sense? Should it be very, very light? Because that's what the number is indicating. 25 atoms. You can't even see 25 atoms. They're so small. So you should get an extremely small mass. And we do. About 5 times 10 to the negative 21 grams. Now work on some practice problems for mass, moles, and molar mass.